Welcome. Welcome to the Unriveted Podcast, where we talk about technology initiatives such as artificial intelligence, digital transformation, and people. But today, today is a special day. This Today is such a special day that we're going to jump into observability. Observability 2024. This episode is brought to you in part by Fast CTO, where results just happen. Hey, John, would you like to introduce our guest? All right. Hey, Martin. Good to see you again. Uh, we do have a very special guest today. Uh, thanks for joining us, Peter Simpkins, who brings to the table 20 plus years of experience in the technology field, currently working as a senior consulting solution engineer uh, in the observability uh, area for Splunk. Uh, which builds purpose-built cloud-native monitoring solutions. So uh, thanks for joining us today, Peter. Martin and I uh, are very excited to have you on the show. Uh, and as we typically do when we have a guest on, we like to kind of turn it over for you, give us a little background on yourself, how you ended up where you are today, and then we'll just kind of go into a free-flowing conversation from there. So if that works for you, Peter, I'll turn it over for you and Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, thanks, John. That's uh, that's a great intro. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, over 20 years, I know I look 25, but uh, I'm not. <laughs> Don't let the baby face uh, fool you. Um, yeah, I, I actually, uh, I, I've sold to Martin in the past. I, I've worked, you know, 10 years at Disney, seven years at New Relic, uh, a couple of years at Chronosphere. Um, and now just over a year at Splunk, uh, recently acquired by Cisco. Um, it's been an incredible journey. Uh, Martin had reached out to me and he was like, you know, really, you know, Splunk. And I mean, <laughs> as you're announcing that, it's like, I, I want to, I'm excited. I want to show you today um, how, you know, Splunk has done some amazing stuff. They acquired SignalFX a few years ago. They burned the boats, meaning... All of the proprietary agents are gone. Uh, I'm an open telemetry zealot, and I am zealoting open telemetry <laughs> every day for customers. And it's not about a, a hard sell or a hard, hard migration anymore. You know, back in the days when uh, I was working with Martin, um, it was all about you made the wrong decision. You got to move to this new thing because it's better, faster. Um, and, you know, it's always a, a matter of you made a mistake. Now you need to fix it. And now it's more of a, you know, this is the last migration you'll need to make. I'm going to show you how it works with, I'll take the top three tools. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it. I mean, there's over 2,000 tools in the open telemetry space now that are supported. I think over 2,000. Don't quote me on that. But Maybe. uh Maybe 1,997 1, based on last week Thank when I you. took the full count. Yes. And I, <laughs> I do have the yeah Grafana dashboard up so we can we can double check that. But uh, yeah. But anyways, it was Martin said, hey, do you want to join? And it's like jumped at the opportunity to, to jump on the podcast with you both. Well, cool, Peter. Why don't you um, dazzle us with what's exciting in 2024? I'm sure you have some wonderful epiphanies to share visually and auditorily with the, our audience. Absolutely. Jump in anytime. Uh, you know, Martin, you've, you've thrown challenging stuff at me uh, in the past. Um, keep doing it. That's uh, uh, definitely, I'm just going to share the entire window here. And just so you're not looking at yourself, <laughs> I just wanted to, <laughs> um, can you see my screen first of all? Yep. Okay. Excellent. So 100% it looks like something that we generated out of uh, Leonardo from a prompt, doesn't it, John? <laughs> yeah, it's something very similar to that before, but I'm guessing that this is going to be a this is going to be a little bit different <laughs> this time. <laughs> it will, it will. Now this this is Grafana that you're looking at, but more importantly, this is the open telemetry dev stats, right? With the CNCF, um, you know, who's contributing the most to open telemetry? Uh, which is number two only to Kubernetes in terms of um, acceleration and and product engagement. So very, very popular. Um, if you go back, you know, multiple years, um, I think I can go back. Uh, I don't think it goes back five years, but we'll give it a try. Um, you'll see that Splunk 
is actually like number one for the last five years as far as contributing code. Um, I was as shocked as you were when I was looking for, you know, which company would, you know, be the most uh, dynamic, the most, you know, involved with the, the open telemetry um, effort. And uh, I picked Splunk. So <laughs> anyways, here <laughs> I am. Um, now, what I'm going to dazzle you with today is um, everything open source, meaning I have set up the uh, open telemetry demo, which um, Austin and others that like Honeycomb uh, have contributed uh, to. It's an amazing demo, um, and it, it fits in really, really well with all of the different tools in the market. So what I want to show you today is just how easy open telemetry is. This is the meat and potatoes of observability, especially in 2024. Uh, we want to know, you know, where traces are coming from. We want to be able to control the, the batch of the traces. We want to control the metrics and the logs um, and be able to control where you're actually sending the telemetry. And this is, you know, I, I wasn't going to share my, my real config, but essentially you set up a pipeline you set up receivers, processors, exporters, and you can have as many destinations, if you if you will, for traces, metrics, and logs. It's super simple, super easy to set up. The industry for the last five years has been super scary because setting up these complicated, you know, containerized solutions, everybody is like, oh, I need to go to the the top vendors to provide integration with .NET or C++ or Elixir, uh, Golang. And the simple truth is you really don't anymore. It's becoming very, very clear that the path forward is open telemetry. So it really comes down to what's the best fit, the best finish for what you're trying to accomplish. So Martin, as an example, I'll go to my, uh, my tool that I'm most familiar with. Uh, I've worked a long time at New Relic. This is the, <laughs> the landing page with New Relic, and I'm not trying to sell any one of these. Just want to show you the the differences between each of the the top three tools that I think are on the market. So, uh, as an example, uh, you get and once again, no New Relic agents have been installed. This is entirely just pointed to their OTLP uh, Open Telemetry uh, endpoint. So we get a, a nice summary of the response time, throughput, error rate. You get a distributed tracing, which is tracing, uh, map all the way through, and you can drill into it. Their same histogram uh, view and everything else. You can ask the AI uh, for important information. Uh, you get a service map uh, as well, and you get the same transaction waterfall and uh, everything that you're used to. So if you're a New Relic uh, Pro and uh, you're looking for, you know, similarity or commonality, oops, I wanted to click on logs as well. Um, everything is here out of the box. So do you agree, Martin? Did I, I, did I represent that? I, I agree. And Mr. Okay. Observability, my self-proclaimed title, has given you one stamp of approval. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Nothing like pitching your former company. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, don't tell my, all my buddies over at Splunk, but that's the, that's the bottom line. Let's take a quick look at Datadog. Also blank account. Um, nothing here is uh, been installed in terms of the Datadog agent. Uh, this is the default landing page. Um, they give you all your issues on the side. Uh, you can drill into the services, and I shouldn't have clicked on front end. This is the uh, uh, the load generator, if you will, uh, front door. So you get the service map. You get to see the, the flows and set your SLOs. You get to see your traces, uh, same waterfall view uh, that you're used to if you are used to Datadog. It's, it's all here. Um, a little, I'll give you a pro tip. If you're looking to save money on Datadog, uh, they don't actually tell you this, but you can point Open Telemetry or OTLP directly to the Datadog API. So there's no need to convert it with Vector or 
install the Datadog agent, you, you might get some benefits of installing the agent, um, but there's no need to convert it. They actually just ingest it just fine. So everything that you see here, no Datadog agent installed. Um, they also have a service map, which um, I like. It's, uh, it's interesting in that uh, it's, it's got moving stuff. Go ahead. It's cute. It's cute. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, you can say it. Uh, you know, it, it, it's useful and it's cute. Um, I'll, I'll give you that. But all the you know features that you see here on the left, um, they, they work just fine. I mean, they probably want you to install their agent. So I don't know, maybe it costs money. I'm not sure. But um, let's jump into Splunk, which everybody knows, including Martin, that Splunk is just logs. <laughs> so for the longest time, um, it's just about getting the word out there that like, hey, we do something other than logs. So this is the default landing page, um, just having to understand, uh, you know, where, uh, which product, if you will, um, has been installed. So this is a good spot to, to see, okay, how far am I in my journey? Um, we do support basically uh, the open telemetry uh, install. So we have a, a fully automated install, um, which you can definitely do. Uh, but in this case, I just pointed to our OTLP uh, endpoint for metrics, traces, and logs. And uh, let me show you what it looks like. So um, this is the, the default landing page, if you will, uh, for APM or tracing. Uh, we give the standard you know, APM overview in terms of top service by error rate, and the golden signals by service. Uh, this was really, really big back in the day, uh, the business workflows are automated workflows. So the longer you let it run, uh, the better it gets in terms of what's critical. We try to figure out what's critical with your service um, that you should see. Um, in this case, I just spun it up. So we get to see like a load generator and you know front end proxy, but in app dynamic speak, uh, this was really cool in terms of you would define your your customer journey and you would define the entire business workflow. Super important. Uh, Splunk, we try to do that for you. And then service map, uh, this is, I would give a score based on uh, the demo architecture. So like which one can get closest to, you know, this sort of view. And this is, once again, just out of the box, uh, Splunk uh, UI, but with uh, everything open telemetry uh, under the hood. Um, you can click on each service. Uh, the way we see logs is the, the correlation that we trace all the way back. Uh, and this is a good differentiator too. So when I first talked to Martin, he was like, you know, Splunk, you do logs. It's like, <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, and in this case, we're just linking to Splunk uh, Cloud. So everything that you're collecting already was Splunk. Uh, you're not duplicating the log events. You're just sending it uh, directly to the Splunk collector, if you will. And then this just links back and give you a nice UI. We can do uh, logs to metrics. Like once you you define everything that you want to include in your search, uh, you can save this, uh, save the query, save to a dashboard um, as, a, as a metric going forward. So really handy in terms of uh, business relevant metrics that you want to keep, uh, you know, day in, day out. Um, we have a fa fantastic metrics pipeline management, um, which other tools have too. Um, I won't dive into it because uh, it wouldn't be fair to New Relic and Datadog, but um, essentially they all do the same thing. You can, well, that's not true. So <laughs> Splunk, you can actually, uh, you know, drop uh, as well as aggregate. So if you create a new rule, you can, you know, look up a particular metric, for example, you can see uh, which dashboard it's being used in, in which uh, alert it's being used in, and you can roll it up. So if it's coming in every second, 
we can roll it up to every 60 seconds, for example. So a good way to save on your bill. So most vendors charge by what you ingest from metrics, traces, and logs. Uh, we want to give you the tools essentially to throttle that. Um, so by dropping or by aggregating, uh, we even may have some other cool tools coming out soon to, to help you save even more. So just as an example. So yeah, we're not just logs anymore, Martin. This is like... Wow. <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> I'm, I'm like stymied. Right? I mean, I when I was looking around, uh, you know, for my next next adventure, I was I was blown away. It's like, okay, you've you've got all the the traces, you've got, you know, a high degree of of leadership in the open telemetry space and um yeah, I was happy. Good good company. <laughs> so, quick question uh from my yeah. perspective. I know we haven't talked about this specifically, but I'm very interested in the AI space and that's obviously become a very big thing in the past just the past couple of years, honestly. But uh, from that perspective, what do you see or what do you uh, predict maybe some of the trends will be as it applies to using observability tools on AI-based services, things that may use um, you know, LLMs as like a backend orchestrator or um, Langchain, you know, which is basically designed to uh, create uh, LLM-based applications. How is the world of observability, as we've seen up to this point, potentially going to have to change or adapt uh, in order to start working with those types of applications? Great question, John. So the the, the bottom line is, uh, as a as a longtime SRE, uh, I just want to get home on time. I want to be able to uh, ask my observability solution. You know what the problem is, and be able to um, see the result. For example, uh, and Splunk has got a lot of announcements coming at our user conference in Las Vegas. Um, I I can only show what we have today, but let me show you some examples um, of how other vendors are doing it. Uh, I've I've seen really good implementations. I've seen really bad implementations. But at the end of the day, I want to be able to, you know, just ask it a question like, how is uh, Paul's Bo Pete, which is my website, uh, plug there. You'll be like the first Go ahead one. And pull that up for us, Peter. Pull up your site. Pull up my site. Okay. Pull up your site. <laughs> yep. it's Peter Simpkins. Wow. <laughs> Sales on, engineering man. growth I consultant. You are, you are observability stamped approved. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So uh, I can say how is paulsbopete.com because I know that I've set up, I think I've set up at least a synthetic check, for example, uh, in New Relic. And I love how this is converting it. Uh, I hope you can see my screen. Mm -hmm. It's converting yeah. it to uh, the New Relic query language. And um, it didn't give me any result, but uh, you get to basically refine it. And this is the same thing that I see in Datadog. And uh, I guess it's only as good as the data that you have. So uh, Splunk is also doing uh, a lot of AI uh, work in the background. So I think the fight right now is, you know, is it generative AI? Is it, you know, mm -hmm. is it making educated guesses for you? Um, but mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day, without giving away any trade secrets, I just want to say, um, you know, can you put this into a report? So if Martin's my boss, um, I want, you know, it to do the work for me um, so I can leave on time, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it, it is very cool. Uh, I've seen some amazing demos where, um, Basically, customers have been using it to refine their uh, their top five percent of the errors. And so, once you oh, wow. include it in ServiceNow and you see all your incidents, for example, uh, it's really easy for it to say, "Okay, these are your top five issues," and then you can get even 
you know, finer grained, you can say, you know, how would I fix, you know, the top five issues? And um, it just helps you go down the path with, uh, with every step. In fact, I saw an amazing demo where somebody had integrated two different AI products with uh, Jira. And so they were able to uh, send their, their product owners to basically the AI interface and they would mm -hmm. groom each story so well that instead of, you know, their development life cycle taking a month, you know, they were shorting, shortening it down to two weeks or less. Instead of seven developers, it would be like two because wow. the, the product owners were just, you know, vigilant with what they were putting in when they were grooming their stories. And uh, I, I was blown away. So um, less mistakes, less integration work, um, and faster velocity across the board. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, you see a lot of this across the board. Um, cloud service providers, for example, I think AWS has Q, uh, which is a, you know, a side panel uh, chat bot, uh, essentially like this. And uh, GCP has uh, Duet uh, mm -hmm. as well. And it's almost like every app under the sun is now adopting this. I wonder how long... Uh, in the future where instead of the AI assistant will just be a little sidebar on the box where it will be the entirety of the application where everything from building dashboards to extracting particular metrics to setting alerts will all just be done by writing, um, you know, requests basically in your native language uh, where the setup process will be done completely behind the scenes and the ask AI that we see on the, right hand side of the screen here will now be you know the entire product <laughs> right maybe yeah. that's uh far far reaching but it's possible i suppose actually john i you know I, i'm not that great with promql i'm not even that great <laughs> with nrql anymore um, mm -hmm. i just want the day where i can just say take all of my dashboards you know that that we have so if i work at a company like disney for example and um, I have thousands and thousands of dashboards. Tell me which ones are being used and then drop the rest. And then, mm -hmm. then yep. Yep. like convert that to, um, you know, open telemetry, you know, convert that to a known standard. Um, I want my alerts to be in a known standard, uh, like a JSON blob is the, mm -hmm. the open telemetry uh, standard. Um, it's, I think the the revolution is here. So, I mean, organizations have to worry about the, the time and the cost uh, in people when it comes to migrating, when it comes to outages. So the observability landscape is being revolutionized right now by AI, right? If you, if you don't have a good uh, AI to, to help facilitate, you know, massive migrations or, you know, how am I going to save money, make money? Um, you're, you're going to be left behind in 2024. That's, that's my big, bold prediction. Great, great prediction. Okay. So as we wrap up here, Peter, um, what advice would you give uh, an early startup to, to cut their teeth on observability? Where, where should they start? I didn't share with you, but the, uh, the open telemetry demo, it comes with Grafana. It comes with... Mm -hmm. You know, Prometheus is a fantastic free open source backend. And by the way, it's the other side of the coin to open telemetry. So you get to define your metrics. You know, so if I want Prometheus metrics and I want to wrap that in open telemetry and send it to vendor XYZ, um, or I want to run it on prem because I'm a brand new startup, um, I can do quite a bit with a free Grafana instance and a Prometheus. Uh, back end um, that's fine for metrics it'll it'll get you started um, it's when you need to start scaling and you need you know things like stability um, you know that that may be where you need budget but you get my point right I would start mm -hmm. simple start open source um, I really like clickhouse for example for a database for tracing um, and of course AWS GCP Azure they all have phenomenal <laughs> products. Um, I'm not <laughs> saying that you shouldn't look at those if you're already there as, as right. a startup. Right. Well, Peter, this has been interesting. Um, as we 
we're wrapping here, I just want to say thank you on behalf of John and I. We are totally unriveted by you, and uh, you get a second stamp of observability approval, I believe, from both of us. So thank you so much, Peter. Anytime. Hey. Have me back. I'll, I'll be more riveting, I swear. <laughs> or, or unriveting. Unriveting. <laughs> we'll take so, either. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, thank Peter. You guys. Thank you.